Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I honestly can't believe that it's June already and I'm making my sixth TBR of the year. I've actually been pretty consistent with making my TBRs, proud of myself for that. And I've just been kind of in this whirlwind all year of where I go back and forth between being like, I want to read so much fantasy romance and I want to read so much YA. And so this month, I'm just really trying to read all of that, you know? I've also, I've also been on a bit of a romance kick. So I'm really just like finding the genres that I love and trying to read all of them. I've mentioned this before in previous videos that I try to structure my TBRs in a way that I can achieve them. Does that happen? Rarely. Probably never. This past month, I got pretty close, but you're gonna have to wait for my May wrap up to see just how close I got. And I'm looking at the stack that I've picked out for June. It's a little ambitious, but you know, we like having goals here. Let's just set forth and do this. So the way that I have my TBR broken up is I have two mangas, two romances, one fantasy romance, which I guess you could maybe lump in with the romances in general. And then I did one, two, three, four, five. Then I did six YA novels. So typically I like to do like four to six YA novels per month. I think that's kind of like the pace at which is sustainable for me. And with all this other stuff in, it's gonna be a bit tight, but I really am hoping to read all of these books this month. So fingers crossed that I can do it. Let's start off with a manga. If you don't know, I really never read manga growing up. It was just something that I hadn't come across. So when I joined booktube and I saw people reading manga, I'm like, oh my God, like I really wanna get into that, but I don't know where to start. And the one series that has really captured my attention is Yona of the Dawn. And I'm currently up to a volume nine. So I usually read like one to two volumes a month, but because I have another manga on the TBR for this month that is a little bit long. I'll just be sticking to this one. Also the back of her hack, my beloved. I love them so much. And like this series is just everything. It's a super long series too. So it's going to take me a pretty long amount of time to get through them just considering how slowly I read them. But like I just adore it so much and I kind of am savoring the experience of reading it. So Yona of the Dawn follows Yona. She's a 16 year old princess in her kingdom and has kind of lived the ideal life when her father is murdered by a usurper and she takes off with her bodyguard, Hack, and they set out across the kingdom to kind of gather their strength after that attack and go and take back her throne from the usurper. And right now she is finding her dragon companions as these dragons are bound to the ruler of her kingdom it's like an ancient bond and so going and finding all the dragons they have so many fun personalities and abilities and i just love seeing yona really come into her character because when she starts this series she's very sheltered and weak and like kind of being thrown out into the world like she has been she's really had to think on her feet and just come into her own power and it's just such a great journey and I love it and there's so many moments that just make me like squeal I just like I don't know what to say like every every volume has been a five star for me because I just love the series with my whole heart and I'm so happy that this was um, recommended to me by Maddie from Princess of Paperback and this has kind of been the manga series that I've been like sticking to the most. Then the next series that I want to read is I think it's finally time for me to read Orange and this is Orange the Complete Collection Volume 1. So this book has quite a lot of pages in it. Usually with manga I can read it like in a sitting, but this one will probably take me a little bit longer because of how thick it is. This was actually a Christmas present to me from Nicole, from Nicole and Her Books. It took like months to get to me because of various mishaps, so I will always have that fond memory associated with this book. This manga follows Naho, who receives a letter from her future self on the first day of 11th grade, and basically it's warning her that her friend will die by suicide, and so she has to try and prevent that future from happening. So there is a trigger warning for suicide. Um, like I wasn't sure if I was going to read this at first because of that trigger warning, but the things that I have seen about it still made me really want to try and give it a go. And I think I'm in like a good space to read this at the moment. So I want to give it a go because it just seems like a manga staple. I feel like a lot of people when they're first getting into manga on booktube start with this one. And I'm very captivated by the premise as well. 
Next, I'll go into the two romances that I want to read. Normally, I read romance on my Kindle, but these I actually have physical books for. The funny story with this book is I had it on my radar, and I couldn't remember if I had requested it from the publisher and so when it arrived at my door i'm like oh the publisher i guess just sent me an arc and then i got an email a few days later from goodreads being like hey did you enjoy this book that you won in the goodreads giveaway so i guess i i won a goodreads giveaway which is just like crazy this is actually the second time i won a goodreads giveaway which it's crazy to me. I didn't think it could happen to a person in their life more than once, but apparently it can. The odds were in my favor with this one. And I did talk about this book in a video I did a few weeks ago called My Most Anticipated Romances for the Summer, since summer is the season of rom-coms. And this one just seems so cute, so I'm so psyched that I want a copy of it. And this is an Own Voices queer rom-com. We follow Brendan Lowell, who loves love. He spends his career creating a dating app to help people find love. He's convinced that the one is out there, even if he hasn't met her yet. When his sister's best friend shows up in Seattle unexpectedly, he jumps on the chance to hang out with her as she was his childhood crush. Annie booked a spur of the moment trip to Seattle to visit friends and family before she moves halfway across the world. The last thing she's looking for is commitment and romance. Getting involved is a bad idea. He wants forever and she wants temporary. But when Brandon learns that Annie has given up on love, he has decided to recreate the most iconic scenes from his favorite rom-coms in order to woo her. It just sounds like adorable and cute and like that fluffy romance goodness that sometimes you just need in your life. And then we have Neon Gods by Katie Robert, which was sent to me by the publisher. And thank you, Sourcebooks Casablanca, for sending this to me because Katie Robert is literally one of my favorite romance authors. I've read a ton of her stuff and am slowly kind of making my way through all of her books. And so this is kind of, I think, her first book published with Sourcebooks Casablanca. And so I was so hyped for it. And this is the Dark Olympus series. I feel like she always takes like common things and then twists them into like something dark and sexy thinking of like the wicked villain series which is literally disney villain smut and it's fantastic and this is tackling the different greek myths and of course we're starting with the classic hades and persephone and i do know that she has other books slated that follow other greek couples and she really just has such a wide spectrum of different relationship dynamics and things that she covers. The thing that made me so excited when I got this was the art print. The art print. Like, are, are we looking at this? Please, hello. Are we looking at this? So I'm excited. Society darling Persephone Dimitriou decides to escape the ultra-modern city of Olympus and start over far from the backstabbing politics of the 13 houses. But that's all ripped away when her mother concocts a plot to engage her to Zeus. With no options left, Persephone flees to the forbidden undercity and makes a devil's bargain with a man she once believed a myth and a man who awakens a world to her that she never knew existed. Hades has spent his life in the shadows and has no intention of stepping out into the light. But when he finds that Persephone can offer him a little slice of the revenge that he spent years planning, it's all the excuse he needs to help her for a price of course. At the bottom it just says, a modern retelling of Hades and Persephone that's as sinful as it is sweet. There's a reason there's so many Hades and Persephone retellings and people eat it up all the time is because it's great. And I will read a million Hades and Persephone retellings and probably love them all because it's great. So now moving into the fantasy romances that I've slated for June. This is one that I actually started this weekend so it's just before June when I am filming this and I have my handy dandy Kindle here and I just started it because even though I have other books I'm trying to read this weekend I was like why not just start a fantasy romance on my Kindle because I love reading in bed on my Kindle <laughs> it's just like addicting to just have a book to read like as I'm falling asleep and I'm trying to make my way through all of the books that I had listed in my fantasy romances I want to read parts of one and two which are up on my channel I'll link them up above and down below and the going is kind of slow because when I start a fantasy romance series I try and like read all the way through so for example in well I won't give any spoilers you'll have to see my May wrap up so The Moonfire Bride by Sylvia Mercedes is a fantasy romance. I found it on Kindle Unlimited and I was just really drawn in by the cover which is what made me add it to my fantasy romance TBR and made me check it out honestly. And in this one it is of course a fae dark romance 
that's my bread and butter, you know? And so we follow Valera, who is poor and just trying to make her ends meet for, to provide for her and her sister as a seamstress. And she is taken away by a dark fae to be his bride. He claims he won't harm her and will return her home after a year and a day as long as she abides by his one rule. Never look at his face. Valera struggles to unravel the mystery of her would-be husband. Why is he so desperate for a bride and why can't he, she look at his face? And it is a two-part fae romance, which means that I will be putting the next book in this series on my TBR as well because if it's a two-part one, why stop at part one? And the second book is called The Sunfire King and it has this intriguing cover. The series overall is called Of Candlelight and Shadows, which I love. Okay, so for the like YA books that I want to get into this month, we have um, two rollovers from my, my May TBR because I'm always overly ambitious with these things, but these are books that I really, really want to read and I'm trying to make a priority to read. The first one is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller is honestly an autobi author for me. I have all of her books, right? here on my shelves as you can see I've read them all and adored them and this is the start of a new duology for her and I'm so excited about it. It is about a sword maker with social anxiety so to get a bit more into what that means. Ziva prefers metal to people and she spends her day making swords tucked away in her forge safe from society. Ziva receives a commission from a powerful wizard and she makes a sword that has the secret to get secrets out of the one it is wielded against. It is a powerful sword, and when Ziva learns of the warlord's intention to topple the world and enslave all the world's kingdoms with its power, she takes her sister and flees. Joined by a distractingly handsome mercenary and a would-be scholar that knows all there is to know in the world's magic, Ziva and her sister set out on a quest to keep the world safe from the sword that she had unwittingly created. And the only way to keep the world safe is to find a worthy wielder or destroy the sword entirely. I mean, this is everything to me. It's everything to me. Look at this cover. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's Trisha Levenseller. I just feel like I, I don't have to say anything more like that. It just is what it is. Beautiful, amazing, fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to read it. Then of course we have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. Victoria Aveyard holds a special place in my heart because the Red Queen series is one of the first books that got me back into reading YA and while it's not like one of my absolute favorites to this day, like I still have such like this nostalgic love for it because that's the first time I picked up a YA book after such a long time and I was like oh my god like I love this type of story and I don't know, it's just been really fun following along her journey as an author and I've met her at BookCon and I don't know, I just love her work. And I actually went to the Barnes & Noble talk that she gave for this book and it was really interesting hearing her perspective. She said that her motivation was Lord of the Rings but that Lord of the Rings is basically really only has like white men in it and so she wanted to create something that is based on that but with more diverse perspectives and so it's kind of like what happens when the heroes fail and you know like the JV squad has to come in and save the day. So the back says, a squire, the survivor of a failed quest, an immortal, timeless, and unfathomable, an assassin, skilled and heartless, an old sorceress holding secrets behind her teeth, and the pirate's daughter, the ward's last hope. The heroes are gone, but the fight to save the world has only just begun. So it's like a, a ragtag group of people have to come together to save the realm. I love it. And the map, the map, it's so pretty. I love a good pretty map. So this just seems like it is calling to me as everything that I love in my YA fantasy. So I'm putting this pretty high up on my priority list to read this month. Next, I have some books I was sent by the publisher, which is Sourcebooks Fire, and the first of that being The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And when I received this book, I was so shook because when you take off the dust jacket, this is what's underneath. Like, do you see how gorgeous this is? I gasped. I was like, this is my aesthetic. This is everything. 
And I mean, the cover itself also very gorgeous. Clara Densmore is an ever witch, and for centuries, the witches have controlled the climate, their power peaking in the season of their birth. But their control is faltering as the climate becomes more and more erratic. In autumn, Clara wants nothing to do with her power. It's wild and volatile, and the price of using her powers, losing someone she loves, is too high to pay. In winter, the world is on the precip of disaster. Fires burn, storms rage, and Clara realizes that she may be the only one that can make a difference. In spring, she falls for Sang, the witch training her. As her magic grows, so do her feelings for Sang, and she's terrified that he will be the next one her magic takes from her. And in summer, Clara must choose between her happiness and her magic, her duty and the people that she loves before she loses everything. I love this, and I love that even just in the summary, we can see that the story is kind of broken up into seasons. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And again, it's just like this beautiful book. This next book seems really cool and I love the chapter headings in it. Let me show you. That's awesome. Yeah, and like the parts, it's just like so dark. And the, this book is What We Devour by Lindsay Miller, which goes on sale July 6th. Um, so I'm trying to read this book before then. So June is the ideal time. And it is the dark and intricate story of a girl who must tether herself to a violent ruler to save her crumbling world. Lorena has a secret. She holds the power of the two banished gods within her, the noble and the vile. She has hidden her entire life and she's happy to live her life as it is, spending her days as an undertaker in her small town and eventually one day marrying her best friend, Julian. She wants to live an unfulfilling life as long as nobody comes asking about her powers. But when the notoriously bloodthirsty prince comes to arrest Julian's father, he immediately recognizes her for what she is. So she makes a deal, a fair trial for her betrothed father in exchange for her service to the crown. And things go from there. I mean, look at the spooky cover. Love the vibes. And then these last books that I have to talk about today are ones that I um, might not completely get to this month, but I want to be ambitious. I want to achieve my reading goals, you know? And the first of those books is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. I keep bringing this book up because I keep wanting to read it because look at it. And if we look under the cover, we have that little bow. Oh, I love it. This is a sapphic YA romance. Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled from her clan and cursed to never feel any sort of emotion, especially love. Ren is a source, which means that others can draw magic from her even though she cannot wield magic herself. She spends her days taking care of her ailing father. When Ren's father falls victim to this magical plague, Ren makes a deal with Tamsin. If Tamsin helps Ren hunt down the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, Ren will give Tamsin the love that she feels for her father. And so the two set out to stop the magical plague, ravaging the land, and catch that dark witch. And so it's kind of like an enemy to lovers, I believe. Like they at least don't like each other, but they're kind of like using each other as a means to an end, and then things go from there. I've literally heard nothing but non-stop praise about this book from M at Perfect Paperbacks. So I trust her judgment and <laughs> I'm really, really hoping to get this one. Also this purple is just like my color. Like this just feels like my aesthetic, you know, you know, please, please pray that I get to this one in June because I will be sad if I don't. This next book that I have to talk about is actually a sequel of a book that was on my May TBR and let's hope by the time June rolls around, I'll have at least almost finished reading it. And that is Iron Heart by Nina Varela. I believe this is a duology, the first book being Criers of War. And I don't know about you, but like when I read a series, I like to read them relatively close to each other if they are all out at that point. I just like feel like I'm really gonna love Criers of War. And so I want to have Iron Heart on my June TBR so I can get to them at least a month apart. I feel like I've kind of moved away from the mode of operation of reading a series straight through, even though I just did that in May, but sometimes I like to break it up like a little bit. I don't know, comment down below, like do you like to read series straight through or do you sometimes like take breaks with different books in between? I've kind of mixed it up over the years of how I do it. I think now that I read more and read so much instead of like, you know, like reading a book over the course of like a week, two weeks, if I read a book over the course of a few days, sometimes I like to break it up. 
I don't know, I'm kind of rambling. I just think change is, you know, life goes on. But this is the sequel of Friar's War, which is about Lady Cryer, who is an automaton, and Isla, who is the human who is seeking revenge on the automatons for leaving her family bereft. And these automatons had used to be enslaved by the humans, and they kind of you know, had a war against the humans and came out the victors. So now the humans are the ones that are enslaved by the automatons. <laughs> Gavin. And this automaton and human find each other drawn to one another. And that's kind of where things are for this book. And I haven't finished Cryer's War or even really started it. So I don't know what's going to happen in this one, but I know that the cover is gorgeous. I love the metallicness and I'm always down for a good sapphic YA fantasy so bring it on hopefully I'll get to this one and I'll just adore this duology and then the next book that I want to get to is a reread that has been sorely needed and that is Reaper at the Gates by Sabatier. So before this book came out I reread Ember in the Ashes and Torch Against the Night in anticipation for this book. So I feel like I've read those books both twice and I have like a pretty solid understanding in my mind of how things go there because I feel like when I read things twice like I kind of have the plot a little bit more in my head more than I would remember if I'd only read it once. I mean it still has been some time so I don't remember every single detail so I might like look it up beforehand because I just want to read three and then read four and then I think sometime in the future I would potentially read all four books in one go. I think that could be really fun to do. And I love to do that with like a series that I loved and I've read it so it was coming out when it's finally completed. So maybe in like a year or two I will revisit the series because it is definitely one of my faves and this book literally emotionally drank me. Um, it's actually the first book that I annotated. <laughs> and if you look I have these like sad paper tabs that have like crumbled. Like what are these? And I obviously didn't like write anything in the book either. Oh look, I saw this cute little sampler I got at BookCon put in here. But like, yeah, these tabs are like, they're wacky. Like, they're not, I don't know what's going on here. So I'm excited to like reread this with my actually refined annotation system that I've yet to do a video on. I've, I've said it's coming for like three years now, it, maybe one day, I don't know. I know like this book is controversial because some people don't like the direction that it went, but like it was just so heartbreaking and I was just shocked the entire time at the events that happened here and I'm scared for the last book because I think something like devastating is going to happen at the end because it's Sabah here and she loves to torture us readers. So I can't wait um, to be tortured. Number in the Ashes kind of takes place in a Roman Empire inspired empire, I guess. And we follow Laia who is just trying to make ends meet. She lives with her grandparents and her brother and when her brother is taken captive by this martial empire and is you know being taken captive because they say that he's a rebel she then goes to the rebels and pleads that they help rescue her brother and in exchange she's planted in this martial academy where they raise these masks which are kind of like the enforcers of the law in the empire and she is to spy on them. And then we have Elias who has been raised in this empire and has come from like a long line of rulers and so he goes to this academy and is learning how to become a mask, how to become someone that enforces the law in this empire and he is just like deeply unhappy with this lifestyle and he doesn't really know if he believes in the empire and what it stands for and so these two meet in this academy setting and they're really at different ends of the spectrum and you know the plot unfolds from there and it is just so brilliant and so good and really goes in unexpected directions and i can't wait to read this and see where things go i love all these characters dearly i'm afraid for them and then hopefully i will get to the fourth book in the series in july i read this book i think it came out in like the summer because i remember reading it by the pool so it must have come out in like June, July 2018. So I don't know, it just like gives me summer vibes. There's nothing about it that's like a particular summer story, but I read it in the summer, so I want to reread it in the summer and then get to the last book. Also, can we please have Torch Against the Night in hardcover because it bugs me having three out of the four of the series in hardcover and not having a second book in hardcover in the new covers. Like, please, I know the series is successful enough that it should be there somewhere. I don't know. So that is my, once again, of course, as always, overly ambitious TBR for the month of June. Let me know down below 
what you are reading in the month of june if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them um uh, leave a book stack emoji if you've gotten this far because my month of june is about to just be a big book stack and don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you like my content and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.